Hey guys, so I want to solve a few more problems of inclined planes with friction. Let's check it out. So I have a three kilogram crate that is on a rough, here's the coefficient of friction, rough means not smooth, not frictionless, um, plane that makes 30 degrees at the horizontal. So it's an inclined plane and it has a force F acting on it, an external force. You're pushing on it, someone else is pushing on it. Okay, so I'm going to draw it this way um, just so that at the absence of a force it would move down um, and then I want this therefore to be I want the direction of positive to be to the right right you could have drawn it this way and then your MGX would have been going that way that works just as well I just like when things are pointing to the right so 30 degrees this mass here is a 3 um, and the coefficient of friction is 0.8 and let's calculate these forces real quick here I have mgx i'm sorry mg this way mgx this way there's mgy this way um there is a normal this way okay and in this first situation we're saying that the force is zero there is no force acting on this thing there's no external force acting on this thing you got all the other ones but you're not pushing on it so the only other force i'm missing here is friction Without friction and without this external force, this block would slide down because MGX is the only force uh, along the block, uh, along the plane. Um, if the block would slide down without friction, that means that we're going to have friction going up to try to um, stop the block. And um, actually, we don't know if that's static friction or kinetic friction yet. Uh, we don't know if the block moves or not, so let's check it out first. Cool, so this is the basic free body diagram um, for this first situation. The other situations will have similar free body diagrams. Let's calculate mg, mgx, and mgy. So mg is mass, 3, gravity, 10-ish. I'm going to round it to 10 just to make our lives easier. Again, in that test, you probably have to use 9.8 unless the professor lets you do 10. Um, mgx is mg sine of theta. Remember, x goes with cosine if the angle is in the correct place against the x-axis against the horizontal um, but it's opposite for inclined plane x goes with sine for inclined planes right it flips um, if you do this you get mg which is 30 sine of 30 and if you plug this into the calculator this is exactly 15 mgy is 30 cosine of 30 and if you plug this in the calculator it rounds to 26 Okay, normal, I'm sorry, uh, Newtons and Newtons. Rounds to 26. Normal, in this case, is the same as MGY uh, because these are the only two forces in the y-axis, so they have to exactly cancel each other. Um, so normal is 26 as well. Okay, these are all the forces. So now let's calculate the acceleration in this uh, particular situation here. To find acceleration on a force problem, we're going to use F equals MA. Remember, acceleration means acceleration in the x-axis because there is no acceleration in the y-axis in these inclined plane problems. Um, sum of all forces in the x-axis equals MAX. And the only two forces I have are MGX and friction. Uh, let's actually calculate friction real quick. I forgot to do that. Friction is mu normal. Okay, Mu is 0.8 and normal is 26 and if you do this it's roughly 21 it's really close to 21 newtons all right so mgx is 15 and friction is 21 and right away before i even try to plug in numbers I hope you realize that this system actually doesn't move at all. So don't get caught up trying to plug in numbers. Uh, you would plug in, let's say, positive 15 plus negative 21. And if you did this, you would actually find an acceleration. But this is wrong because this 21 here, in this case, would be your static friction maximum as well as your kinetic friction because it's the same coefficient. Both coefficients are the same, so both forces are the same, um, which means that there's just not enough force for this to move. So I'm going to say here that since MGX is less than friction static max, the acceleration of the system is zero, and block 
doesn't even move, okay? Doesn't move, it doesn't accelerate, all right? So that's what happens there with part A. You just have to realize that there's not enough force to get this block moving. Now, for part B, I'm saying that there's a force that's pushing this block down the plane. There's a force that's pushing this block down the plane. So, it's going to look something like this. I have MGX doesn't change, it's 15. There's an applied force here down the plane of 15 as well. Okay, and um, if both forces are down, friction is going to oppose the direction of motion, the direction that things would move without friction. Um, so friction is going to go this way. Um, and friction is uh, 21. Now check it out. Because I have enough force, this these two combine for 30. Because there's enough force to overcome friction, you do overcome friction. You start moving, which means instead of having a kinetic fric a static friction, we now have kinetic friction. They happen to be the same number, but it's a different type of friction. It's now kinetic friction. Okay. Those are all the forces that matter. Those are forces in the direction of motion. The acceleration will not be zero because you have enough forces to overcome friction and we will move. To find the acceleration, we write sum of all forces equals ma. Okay, the forces are, this is the direction of positive. I have these two guys as a positive, this as a negative. So if you wanna do this really quickly, you can just say I got 15 plus 15 plus negative 21 equals ma. The mass is three, and then a is what we want. This is 30 minus 21 is a nine. So the acceleration is three meters per second squared. All right, that's it for that part. We got B down, let's do C, D, and E. In part C, we're gonna push up the plane with 10 Newtons. So let's keep the block in this plane like this. And I have an MGX here of 15. You don't have to recalculate MGX because the angle didn't change, so MGX won't change, right? So we just leave it alone. Um, and I have a force this way of 10, okay? Now, the direction of friction Friction has to be the last force that you put in. And the reason for that is because depending on which way you're pushing, friction might be different, okay? Friction will oppose the direction that motion would have um, without friction. So forget friction for now, just between these two, this is a greater force, which means this thing would go that way, okay? And I'm gonna call that the direction of positive. Therefore, it means that friction is going the other way, okay? It means friction, therefore, must be going up the plane over here, I'll make it blue and the friction maximum is, or the, the friction is 21, right? Um, is there enough force for this to move? Remember what I just said, without friction, the system would be going down. Now we introduce friction, friction is up. So the question is, is the 15, which used to be enough force to make this go down, is that still enough force now that we introduce friction? And the answer is no, right? So this is actually not going to move. So since MGX, which used to be the leading force, right, um, was greater than 10, but it's less than F plus little f, so that means we don't move at all. The acceleration is zero, okay? It was not enough force to get you to move. Let's go to part D now. Part D says you're pushing with 25 up the plane, okay? You push with 25 up the plane. Let's draw that here. Um, force is 25. MGX is 15. So in the previous question, the stronger force was the, the 15, but now the stronger force is the 25. Without friction, it's going to move in the direction of the strongest force, which means friction will come in against that. Okay, and that's what makes this question weird. And that's why I wanted to make sure I, I talked about this so you would see it, which is friction will depend on the other forces, right? So if the net force is up, friction is opposing that. It's now friction is 21. This was the leading force. This was the leading force. 
Now that we've added a maximum friction of 21, is the leading force sufficient to overcome all the other forces? And the answer, once again, is no, right? Even though it's going up, it's still not enough force since MGX is less, I'm sorry, since the leading force F is less than MGX plus little friction, your acceleration is zero, not enough force, okay? Again, what's tricky here is that you can't just memorize, there's no super easy way to do this, there's no one, one um, solution, one size fits all solution, you have to interpret the direction of friction depending on the other forces and see if there's still enough force to cause um, for there to be motion. Let's do an example, a part E. Part E, the force is 40, and we want to know the acceleration. It's 40 up the plane, okay? So, first we pushed with a 10. The bigger force was MGX down, but friction meant that it didn't move. Then we moved, uh, we pushed with a force that was bigger than MGX, but it was, still wasn't enough because friction now flips to the other side. Here, I have a force of 40. 40 is certainly more than MGX of 15. Because 40 is more, I'm going to call that the leading force, right? Let me get these 40 out of here. And that means that friction, again, will be going down because friction opposes the net force. And friction will be going with 21. The question here, is this 40 enough to go against the other two forces? And it is because these two forces these two forces here add up um, to 36, so 25 was not enough. These two forces add up to 36, so 40 is enough, okay? So 40 is enough. Since F is greater than the two forces going against it, the acceleration will not be zero, which means I'm going to use F equals MA to find it. Sum of all forces in the x-axis equals MA. We're almost done. Um, just for this one, since we're going to be going up the plane, I'm going to call that the direction of positive, since that's the direction of the winning force. So I'm going to say I have plus 40, and then opposite to it, I have negative 21, negative 15, mass is 3, and then the acceleration here. So I have 40 minus 36 equals 3A. So A is 4 over 3, or 1.33 meters per second squared, okay? So I know this was a very long question, a um, little painful, but again, I wanted to show you all the possibilities um, that you could have in, in, in a weird problem like this, right? This literally covers everything, all right? That's it for this one.